Bloom's Protocol describes how two parties that do not trust each other can fairly flip a coin over the telephone. First, Alice chooses P and Q, which are distinct large primes. Both must be congruent to 3 modulo 4. In our example, P and Q will be small numbers to make it easier to read. Alice chooses P as 43 and Q as 71. Next, Alice computes N equals P times Q and sends N to Bob. Thus, in our example, N is equal to 3053. Bob finds a random B between 1 and N. He chooses 632. Bob then calculates A, which is B squared mod N, which in our case is 2,534 mod 3,053. Bob then sends A to Alice, who finds the four square roots of A modulo N, chooses one of them, and sends it to Bob. In our case, the SAGE code provided shows how Alice could calculate one of the square roots, which she calculated to be 2,421 mod 3,053, which is congruent to negative 632 mod 3,053. If Alice's chosen square root is congruent to plus or minus b modulo n, then Alice wins, as she does in our case, as a is congruent to negative b mod 3,053. If c is not congruent to plus or minus b modulo n, then Bob wins and he would have to prove he won by using the other square roots of a mod n that Alice will have provided to find the factorization of n. If plus or minus x and plus or minus y are the four square roots of a modulo n, then the greatest common denominator of x minus y and n will either be equal to p or to q. Bob will use this information to find one of the factors of n and then it is trivial for him to solve for the other prime factor of n. One of the ways that we thought of to stop Bob from actually cheating in this coin flip protocol is to use encryption as well as the protocol. So during the step in which Bob computes his A, he would also take his B, encrypt it, and send that to Alice along with his A. Then at the end of the protocol, when it's time for Bob to prove, he'd have to prove either way whether he was right or whether he was wrong. He would send over to Alice how to, encrypt, how to decrypt the encrypted string and Alice would verify whether she guessed correctly or incorrectly. Even in our correction, there is a way for Bob to force his loss, even though it's pretty unlikely. Bob only knows that B and negative B are square roots at the end of the protocol, so, if Alice chooses a C that isn't one of these two, Bob can send her a false decryption. All he has to do is find a decryption that will decrypt his encrypted B into the C that Alice chose. Thus, he would prove that Alice indeed won. If, however, Alice and Bob are doing this protocol within reasonable time constraints and they choose large enough numbers, it's highly unlikely that Bob will find a decryption to match that exact C in reasonable time for Alice to not get suspicious. So, if Alice knows that our correction is slightly flawed, she can accuse Bob of cheating. This is an alternate coin flipping protocol based on the method used to modify Bloom's protocol so that Bob cannot lie and say he lost intentionally. The protocol is as follows. Bob chooses two strings, numbers, or text, encrypts one, and sends the encryption output to Alice without informing her of how to decrypt it. Bob tells Alice the two strings he chose. Alice must then guess which string he encrypted and sent to her. After Alice informs Bob of her guess, Bob sends her the relevant information to decrypt the encrypted string, and Alice verifies whether she guessed correctly, in which case she wins, or incorrectly. There is another way to fairly flip a coin over the phone, assuming two malicious parties, the Peruvian coin flip. This method uses AND gates, as well as OR gates. Both of these gates take two input digits and output a single digit, either a 1 or a 0, which can correspond to two separate outcomes, for example, 0 corresponding to no and 1 corresponding to yes.
The only way to output a 1 from an AND gate is to input two ones. otherwise you get a 0. The only way to output a 0 from an OR gate is to input two zeros. otherwise you get a 1. By connecting two outputs together as inputs into another gate, you can create circuits of these gates. For example, in the Peruvian coin flip, we will use this circuit of gates with six input channels and six output channels. Just like with the Blum protocol, we have two people, Alice and Bob, who want to flip a coin over the phone. Because Alice and Bob are married and they argue a lot, they have already selected a circuit to use, which is the first step in actually executing the Peruvian coin flip. So, after having selected their circuit, Alice will choose a random six-digit binary string and input it through the circuit. This will result in a certain output. Thus, she sends this output to Bob, and Bob, with this output, tries to guess the parity of Alice's input. Otherwise said, she tries to guess how many ones and how many zeros there are, and he decides are there an even number of ones or an odd number of ones, which correspond to the two choices as heads or tails. After he has selected his guess, he sends this guess to Alice, and Alice will tell Bob if he is correct. After Alice receives Bob's guess, she tells him if he is right or wrong. Then, she reveals her input so that Bob can verify that it produces the claimed output. Just like with our uncorrected version of the Blum protocol, there are some possible ways to get around the fairness of the system. If we look at all the possibilities for six-digit inputs in binary, we can see that there are two to the six, or 64 possible combinations for inputs. However, if we use the same inputs, then there are fewer outputs available to us and almost all of the outputs correspond to two or more inputs. This means that Bob cannot simply backtrack to figure out which of the inputs Alice used given her output. One of the problems with using this protocol is that the output 011000 can only be produced using the input 100010. This means that there is a 1 in 64 chance that Bob will know with absolute certainty the input that Alice used without having to guess. However, with inputs larger than six digits, this problem kind of fixes itself. It becomes highly unlikely that an output will exist that pairs only to one input. This makes it highly improbable that Bob will be able to know with certainty which input Alice gave, assuming that for every input there exists at least two outputs, Bob will not be able to guess with 100% certainty which input that Alice gave. Another problem with the Peruvian coin flip is that Alice has a possibility to sway the odds in her favor. All she has to do is find two inputs, one with an even number of ones and the other with an odd number of ones. And depending on Bob's guess, she can choose the input that would result in whichever decision she wanted, a win or a loss. And we realize that this Peruvian coin flip isn't as secure as the Blum protocol, but we thought it was worth sharing just so you could see that there are other methods, even though they're not as secure, to flipping a coin over the phone.